I'm sure the the next the new generation of you know people getting into hacking and making a career out of it and whatever, if you ask like give a couple of more years and if you ask this in interview questions, I'm sure you have a lot of kids that say their first experience with like programming and getting into these kind of things was with Minecraft Redstone stuff. I'm sure of it. Must be. Me too was mine. Okay, well, the, see, then the generation is already there. For sure. Must be. Like, it's it's such a massive game. Redstone is so much fun. Uh, you know, of course, that must have motivated, like, masses of, of new people. Welcome to the stream, everybody. How's it going? Uh, welcome back. Thanks for showing up. So today's stream, I think, will be a little bit slower and more boring than usual because actually I think I don't want to continue building uh, the component that we started yesterday, the RAM module, because who would have thought I got another delivery? Okay, as you can see, another order from the store where I order my electronics from has arrived. Basically, I ordered, tried to order two different things. First of all, the chips we are using are 74LS chips, which uh, are these very old school uh, transistor logic based chips, and they draw a lot of current. The modern version are these um, HCT chips. They are CMOS chips, and so they are supposed to be save a little bit more uh, power. Um, I know they are like the modern version of, uh, of the chips that we have here. Um, so I don't think I will install them today. It's something that I want to try out uh, how compatible they are just as an alternative, something to experiment with at another point. So the chips I think are is nothing for today. The second thing I have is that when I ordered my first order for the uh, for the computer, I had ordered these massive uh, resistors here. Like if you compare these two, like normal breadboard size resistors. Let me see where I have, here I have some. See how much uh, bigger they are. So putting these big ones onto the breadboard will look hideous and will not really fit. So I had to reorder them again. And then instead I instead of the uh, carbon based resistors, I bought, uh, bought the metal electro whatever resistors. Um, Usually they are, have a bit uh, better tolerances. These have uh, like higher differences. Like these are a bit more accurate. Not that it would matter much, but I think the blue ones, I think will look nicer. Just adds a bit more color than the brown ones, I, I thought. So I ordered uh, a lot of these as well. So th this is what, what has come. And then you can see I've ordered masses of LEDs. So these LEDs here, um, let me turn it on and show you in camera, you know the problem, um, is that depending on how they are angled and shine into the, uh, into the camera, they appear super bright or not really so bright. But these have the same brightness, it's just like the angle is a bit off. So what I did is I bought basically red ones again, but these should have a wider uh, angle of light, so I want to compare these to these here and see how they are comparing if maybe we should exchange all the red ones with these here or if it doesn't make any difference at all that could also be maybe it's a bit brighter to the side but it will still be crazy bright as this when it's like straight i wonder if it does any difference so that's something i want to test today then you can see here a blue led blinking that one is very powerful oh yeah and so these have different like light intensities like this blue one for example is very bright and it's overpowering everything and it's a clear LED. To keep the build kind of consistent, I ordered these uh, blue tinted uh, LEDs instead. Uh, and so I wanna uh, replace uh, that as well and see how that looks. And then as an alternative to also test, I ordered these ones. I've never had LEDs with a flat head. Like, let me show you. They have, they are not round at the top. They are like flat. Do you see that? So they have like a flat head 
and maybe that also helps with how the light looks like on camera. So that's another thing I want to compare today. Basically, I want to compare the different LEDs. So that's like the first thing kind of that I want to uh, do on stream. I'm not sure yet if I want to install that. If you look here, we have like a blue white switch uh, here that is very small and it's kind of nice, but this one also would look nice. So um, especially maybe if we do stay with the black and white theme of these bigger uh, components here, it would also look nice. So I'm not sure if I maybe want to install this one, but just as an alternative. Uh, let me get a breadboard here and then let's uh, hook up some of these LEDs. There's a channel that does an 8-bit CPU with pipelining. That sounds crazy. Okay, so I have here these array resistors. So basically they are also just resistors, but they are put in a package like this. The idea is that you know, can use them easily to hook up a lot of single LEDs to give them all their resistor that they need. But I forgot what value they had. Oh, 470. That might be a little bit too high for our purpose though. Let me uh, check again the uh, resistor LED calculator. Okay, so we got that. And then we need to look up again the, they are two milliamp. No, wait, I forgot. We need to also look up uh, these LEDs, th what their specification is. So this, the, these are the new ones that I bought. So these are, mm, so they, ha they have a 60 degree. I think the others one were 30 or 40 degrees. So let's see about that. So they have, so I plugged in here a couple and now let's use the second resistor line I have here. S has somebody paid attention to what I did? The three that I just threw in there, did I take them out of here or did I take them out of here? This is already getting, this is already bad. This is already bad. Let's see if we are professional enough to have plugged in LEDs or if we screwed that up. Uh, so let's connect the power. And then let's turn the power on. Okay, I screwed something up. They are all correct. Maybe this cable is a bit dodgy. This is posit VCC ground. Oh, I plugged them in not to ground. Of course, this can't work. It has to go into ground. If you see that here, I had it in this row up there. I mean, it's a bit unfair to compare, but you can. I think. I think you can already see how much here it changes the angle while here the difference is really, it really only starts to change like at these kind of angles. This is where these ones are almost like looking off, right? I think the, these are already better. F oh my God. They are getting very warm. Why are they getting warm? Is it normal? Would you, somebody experience, would you say it's normal that if they are spec for 30, and the normal one is two, that seven makes them hot. Is the left LED, oh shit, you are right. Good eye, good eye, good eye. It was, maybe it was only this one getting hot. I don't know if you already know this, but you can uh, use the current limiting on your power supply so things don't explode if you make a short. We have heard the power supply clicking a couple of times already. Don't worry about it. <laughs> We have made good use of the current limiting already. Uh, what do you mean from scratch? Uh, I mean, we don't make the transistors ourselves. We don't go outside and mine our metals. Uh, but uh, we, we are using uh, these kind of chips that implement certain gates and we all hook them up to make like a CPU. It's based on Ben Eder's series uh, that is also based on a book. Uh, this is the parts list of this computer, but on the website, on that link there, leave that for now and let's exchange here for our, uh, for our ALU, these LEDs, because these are not cut yet in any way anyway. So we can like replace these with the new ones and kind of like see, can then compare these ones to these ones. I thought about like, you know, adjusting them to the same one or 
I know. Doesn't matter, I guess. Holy crap, what was happening? What was that? What was that? <laughs> Th that must have been sellout hacker again. He has been terrorizing me for the past months. <laughs> oh shit, I'm bad at acting, sorry. I, in my head it was way more dramatic. I built that yesterday. I thought it would be fun as a way to uh, have a bit like chat be and stream be more interactive. So look at that. So these ones are pretty angled. Like if you, let me turn it a little bit to, so that it's more visible in the uh, Canon camera. As you can see, they are almost like in an arch, shining this in like this direction and this one shining in like the other kind of direction. They are still very bright. Even the angled ones look still very bright on, on the camera. Now they are still way overexposed. Unfortunately, they don't look like pretty red. Do they get hot? Nope. But you know what? Hey, good that you ask about temperature. Because do you know what? Okay, there was a bit anticlimactic. Give me a minute. Good that you talk about temperature. Because... Sorry. Do you know what? So these LEDs show up as yellow, but if you th look at the, like the temperature scale, uh, it's not so extreme. Like the ICs themselves get way hotter. Like th this is, I mean, these ICs also have to drive those LEDs, right? These LEDs are connected to, to that IC. So that IC is heating up to like 47 degrees. The LEDs themselves are like at 35 degrees, I guess. And the surrounding here is like 26 degrees, 27 degrees. So yeah, the ICs definitely get hot, but the LEDs don't get as warm as in comparison. So I think it's totally fine. You can also, of course, see it up there. Uh, they do show up, but uh, it's not it's not as extreme. I definitely want to switch to these ones or uh, the flathead one. So this is what we're testing out right now. Okay, so they are definitely darker. They definitely require more, uh, more current. But the cool thing is because they are darker, they actually appear red. Uh, let me put one that is not on right next to it, just so you can like kind of compare on and off. Is that noticeable on stream? On the other hand, they are right now they're connected through the 450 ohm. So in circuit, they would not be connected through such a high, uh, such a high resistor, I think. I have to say, r right now, that seems like a bit too extreme. Like they are too dark, I would say, for the camera. My camera is freaking out again. I'm sure it wants the wire cutter. Does anyone make strips of LEDs designed to plug into breadboard? Yeah, actually. So this is like a, a bar of LEDs. I have to say the flat ones look kind of weird to me. Like I'm so used to the regular LED design that like flathead LEDs kind of look odd. And I'm still not sure if I'm bothered by it or if I just have to get used to it and not be not such a 
victim of um, of what is it called of things that you already know what is it called victim of nostalgia nos nos nostalgia or whatever <laughs> but you can clearly see which ones are on and off right and they actually do look red on stream in person you can also clearly see that they are on like this is also the difference with like the stream even here i can clearly see that they glow in person maybe maybe this camera actually here the canon camera can convey this a bit better like when you look at these in person you can clearly tell which ones are on and off just on stream they with the bright light that i have like from above shining here it's they are just a bit too weak for that i would say but here you can also in person clearly see that they are on what, what does everybody here in chat think do you think these flat ones uh, are a better choice than uh, these other LEDs here and now let's check out the blue LED up there I want to see how this one looks like okay it's also kind of overexposing it's a bit bright but we can definitely put a lower resistor here I guess to make it a bit uh, darker but um, in person I think it looks nicer just because it's not a clear one right it's, it's like more consistency if you have these clear LEDs in which I mean it was only the blue one was clear right so it wasn't too bad but uh, I, I think I want to put put that one in there I think that they look they look nice it looks like crystal meth or something you, you want a bag you want a bag it's blue it's blue it actually is blue I know what surface mount components are but I don't know why why SMD is like I know what SMD in the context of electronics means I don't understand the uh, the what the sex what, what it sexual means okay so basically how I do this always let's take eight of these uh, two, two, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I am bending the so ground stays where it is, and I'm bending out VCC, and I prepare them like that. Hi, doggy. Come here. Come here. Come here. Say hey to chat. Come on, say hey to chat. Say hi to chat. Oh, wait. This is ASMR material. Everybody, relax. Lay back. Lay back. And close your eyes. That was it. It's done. Maybe I make even a photo to remember. What kind of challenges did you encounter in the CSCG finals? Actually, that's a good question. I actually don't really remember anymore. I remember one challenge I worked on was a port knocking challenge. So it's also like kind of like a meh challenge. Uh, but I remember it because like the secretary of state, no, like a minister or so she came in with like a TV team and was walking around to look at what these young uh, aspiring security professionals are doing at this competition in the finals and so she was walking around and I was then being asked if I could explain what I'm working on right now and I basically told her so this is a port knocking challenge you know it's a like like knocking like knocking knocking on ports <laughs> Because I didn't know how to explain it. And she was, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Smile, smile. Nodding, nodding, smile. Walking to the next person. Do LEDs count as wires? I don't think so. Otherwise, we might have to change the stream category. <laughs> uh, just everybody who is out of the loop. The uh, Twitch Terms of Services uh have uh, talk about how many um how many like technical components and stuff you are allowed to uh add or use do in your streams before you must before you are like not allowed to be in the just chatting category and so um 
we need to be careful with uh, how much work we do. Otherwise, we cannot be in the just chatting category. First one done. I would say let's turn it on and compare. So this is the old register. Uh, what am I talking? This is the new LED register. So this, these ones here are the new ones. Look how nicely red they are glowing. And down here you see the old uh, LEDs. Um, just for those who joined later, like in our, you see here, all these LEDs, when they are on, they have the same brightness. But on stream, like this one looks like shiny white, while this one here looks kind of red. And the difference here is just the angle that they are in, because they own, they have a like a light angle of 30 degrees. So, you know, those 30 degrees make a big difference for how it looks like on camera. So I definitely wanted to fix that. I bought LEDs with a wider angle and they are fine too. But I think the flathead like look the best. They look really red. It's not overexposing. They don't look white. Uh, also in person, they look really red. They look really nice. Um, you can kind of see on this camera here, uh, on, my, on my macro camera, that they are just like really nicely glowing red. I think that looks really nice. Are you getting interested in electronics? Uh, I've been interested in electronics as an amateur for for a long time. Uh, I'm just an amateur and it's not like I don't really have projects I do much or so. I still very much see myself more in software, but it's definitely, you know, stuff I like to learn and there's obviously fun stuff. And I've made several videos on electronics on my channel too. Uh, in case you didn't know, I have this whole series on a CTF that is based on hardware. So it was like a hardware CTF. The target board was like an Arduino and we did quite some electronic stuff there. Uh, that's why I also bought like the oscilloscope here and stuff like this to uh, perform some hardware attacks on this Arduino. I've seen that a Ben Eater has followed this channel, but I wasn't sure I didn't, wouldn't, think that this is the real Ben Eater. He talked about the project. Oh, damn. Oh, hi, Ben. Uh, really nice meeting you. It's an it's a it's an honor that you check out the stream. Um, of course, you have probably received uh, a lot of messages about this project. It's, it's an awesome project. I've been uh, looking forward for a long time of starting it. Uh, it's cool that I can do this now on stream. Uh, there's nothing really special other than uh, we are following your series um, so far and just doing the original uh, build. Mm. I've uh, One thing I wanted to say to you is that I've also listened to your pod... Oh, I haven't listened to the whole podcast yet. I'm still on it. Uh, your uh, Ben, Ben and Blue podcast where you talk about education because um, I, I have like an educational YouTube channel as well. And especially what you were talking about discovery fiction is something I think that I also do that I didn't realize that I'm doing and I feel like that is like a big part of why people think my videos are educational and stuff like this like this has always been like this idea of trying to come up with a path how something was discovered or uh, like even make that up for myself like when I learn something new I often try to think of why is it the way it is? And I try to make up myself a story why it is that way. And thinking about it that way, I always found I have a, get a better understanding of things. And basically, I put that into my videos as well. Um, and, and, and so generally, I, I like that approach. Yeah, so, so your discussion about this with the different kind of views on it and stuff like this is, is for me, as somebody who makes video, videos about it, uh, uh, was... was uh, like very helpful and stuff. Has there nobody been streaming this before, by the way? I didn't think that it was so, so something so special or so that like streaming the build. But yeah, so um, I mean, I'm not sure if you have checked out the stream before, but uh, today we actually just like clean up a little bit. Um, if you if you look, we just I just replaced the other LEDs. Thanks for the Twitch Prime uh, Twitch this so I've used these other LEDs with a very bad like uh, sh angle. And so on stream, they like overexpose and others look almost that as if they were off and stuff like this. And I didn't quite like that look, especially on stream not. So 
I bought a couple of different LEDs with different angle and I bought these flat head LEDs. And so um, we tested them down here, how they look on video and these, these flat head LEDs look way better. You can also see this in the close up macro camera up there. Um, I think, I think they, in person they look much better and on camera you can actually tell that they are red. Is there uh, instructions that you are trying to implement? Uh, we are not building any, any real instruction set or anything like this. I, I don't have the book Ben either based this build on, so I'm not sure if the instruction set that Ben is implementing on the CPU uh, was already implemented in the, uh, in the book like that. Uh, if that's the case, the architecture would be called SAP, I guess, simple as possible. But otherwise we are free to make our, up our own instruction set and make add more instructions if we want to. As far as I understand, I still haven't finished the series, right? We are working through it together here. Also, um, you have made a video about CRC. Um, as somebody who is, so I, I do security, IT security videos. I work in that field professionally. I'm a, a freelancer uh, doing like application security, code audits and stuff like this. And um, also, in case you didn't know, there are like competitions, hacking competitions called CTFs. Uh, so part of my channel, a big part of my channel is also like playing these hacking competitions and explaining my thought process and how I approach and solve these challenges and stuff like this. And so CRCs are actually sometimes an interesting kind of challenge because maybe there's some kind of crypto challenge and they use some kind of custom uh, CRC and basically based on like collecting a lot of data and stuff like this, you can like solve this equation of the CRC. And I never quite understood this, especially like uh, how you write the CRC with like the polynomials. I see that on Wikipedia and I never quite got it. I, I didn't have that in university. And so, I don't know, I couldn't really get a grasp on it. I haven't really, like I spent a little bit of time on it, I guess not enough, but then you made this really excellent video on CRC. Uh, that just explains it how I wish I had explained, have, have, I wish I had been able to explain it. I use bright studio lights when I record, so LEDs don't appear as bright. Yeah, I also have like here two LED panels, um, but this this camera here is just a Logitech webcam and it's like, as you can see, like, adjusting the exposure and stuff. I guess it's not bright enough still for these LEDs. This camera on the other hand, like this DSLR, which has a bit better um, stuff, uh, what, what's it called? I don't know, whatever. But yeah, on there, they don't overexpose that much. Okay, so let's continue with uh, doing the LEDs for the ALU. Uh, this has already been quite a challenge for Ben as well. I want. I was also wondering if you could maybe reuse some of the uh, the connections from over there, from the uh, the output of the others, instead of then plugging and crowded here. But I probably they, they will like cross or something then, and, and crossing would be bad. So not sure. Let's see. How can so I just got this multimeter, so I'm not quite sure how can I make it beep. Ah, there we go. I'm not sure if you see that on, on camera. So this, uh, to, to, to see if there's connectivity, this multimeter sends out a small current. And when I connect here and go through this, the, I guess this is an input or something. See this LED here? See how it turns on slightly? So that little bit of current coming from this multimeter is enough to light up that LED there. Also, uh, Ben, in case you are still here, for the first couple of days, I had to use this to strip my wires and it took quite a while until I got a proper wire stripper. You don't believe how happy it made me when I got this and started using it. It is a world of difference. <laughs> it was terrible. Did you also try to talk about strippers in chat? Naughty, Ben. <laughs> this, this remains a problem. I keep whitelisting any uh, uh, any variations of stripper with stripper dot, stripper comma, stripper whatever, stripper exclamation mark, uh, 
and I have permitted stripper dot now for a lot, but this bot keeps. It's it's whitelisted. I added it to the whitelist. Add permitted term stripper, but it keeps getting caught. Yeah, maybe everybody shouldn't be such a dirty mouth and start calling them wire insulation insulation removal remover tools here. <coughs> now that Ben is here, I feel not like goofing around with ASMR again. No, it's a bit awkward. Here, I think this is such a cool sound on the recording. It has ASMR potential. Stream elements developer, I built this awesome system to catch all the variations of bad words. Really adds all variation of those bad words. Yeah, uh, we have a developer of, of uh, stream elements also in chat or had it earlier. I'm not sure if he's still here. So yeah, complain to him. <laughs> not gonna lie, I, I streamed once where I was really tired and we were watching a video with just like catching up with stuff. I, I'm not sure which video it was, but I also uh, had a, like a couple of seconds of sleep time here on stream. I like napped away. I have that still as a, a clip somewhere. But that's not your video's mistake. I actually have trouble staying awake all the time, even in university, even with the most interesting stuff even in cinemas, uh, in movies that I like to watch. Uh, if, if I don't do stuff like in parallel with multiple things, uh, I fall asleep super quick. Like I, I fall asleep. And then when I do want to go to bed, uh, I can't sleep. It's, it's not that noticeable on clips. I'm sure nobody actually watching the stream really noticed because I was like leaning like this when like watching it on this laptop there. And then I was already like having my eyes like kind of like this. And then it, it was like this. And then I woke up again. It didn't flinch too much and realized crap. I fell asleep for a second. Uh, but yeah, I, I saved that for myself. I'm glad that you like the tiny wires. I mean, we spent hours on each wire, quite literally. I think the amount, actually, with the amount of wires we have added and all the hours of me streaming this project so far, you could almost be at like maybe two wires per hour or so. I wonder what the overall rate is. We should calculate that. Dantelo TV, this looks complicated. It actually is not really complicated. I'm sure it looks complicated when you just look at it like that. But uh, first of all, we are also just following uh, a YouTube series uh, by Ben Eater. Um, so we, so you could build that yourself absolutely too. And if you build it and follow the series, you, you, you can't even understand all these comp components and what it does. It's, it looks only comp complicated as a whole. Um, in, in single parts is absolutely doable. Should we like test what happens? Okay, somebody was saying I should cut the tip off. So should, should I try this? I feel like I don't want to ruin my wire cutter though. Well. Let, let me see if I have something else to ruin. Sandpaper is maybe an option we could try. And I have here these large, these large ones. Should I try if I can cut it? cut a, a flat tip of this blue LED with that. I don't feel like this is a good idea. I think I feel like this shatters if I like really squeeze it. Uh, no, I feel like this is not making any progress. I do have a saw too, wait. Maybe I left it outside. One second, one second, one second. Sorry, camera battery is empty. I get it back in a second. I feel like I'm get I'm being judged right now by a lot of people into electronics. I am. <laughs> yeah. To my defense, I wanted to buy flathead blue ones, but I couldn't find any in the store. Just just look away. I can tell you when when it's done. So at the top, it's not looking too nice. We want to saw it, but I just want to quickly test it. Uh, let me just plug it back in really quick. It looks so bright. Uh, let me show you from the side with the macro camera. See on there, it looks kind of cool. That's kind of how it looks in real life too. I think we conclude this with, we want a blue flathead LED. 
Yeah. Or we build, yeah, so the other option that we have, maybe that would also be fun. We could, uh, let me show you. So we could use like some uh, of these prototyping boards and their spacing is like exactly also this spacing. So if we add like pins, they perfectly fit in there. And so what we could do is we could, uh, I mean, they w would also look nice. Maybe they exist also a little bit smaller. We could like make like modules that just like perfectly plug in here. And then they have like nicely spaced LEDs there with maybe a label on what this module is on there as well. Now these, I feel like are a bit too large, so they hide a lot. So if they would be like basically half, like two, four, they have like six. So if there were maybe like only three or four uh, uh, high, and then like half as long maybe, or maybe like two thirds or something like this. And then you would just like plug them in there. And then th I think that could maybe also look cool. I don't know, it's maybe in an artisting option we later have. It would, it will increase the height of the whole thing though. Like if you consider hanging this in a wall, something like this, you know, the LEDs would then start on top of that and this would sit above certain some wires so it wouldn't sit too close down. I know, but it's an idea. Uh, see you in a moment. Okay, welcome back. <coughs> <coughs> Thanks for participating again. Can't believe the sellout hacker has hacked my stream again. Uh, yellow LEDs, there we go. This is the old one. This is the new one with a wider, should have a wider angle and the flathead one. Uh, looking at the overhead camera, moving here, let's see, angle wise. See like this one here is still like pretty wide while this one gets uh, very dark. Like This one here is only overexposed up until here and so starting here it's like yellow while this one here can go to higher angles before it's like oops <laughs> not overexposed anymore but yeah the flathead just looks nice all along it's just yellow i'm sure then the next the new generation of you know people getting into hacking and making a career out of it and whatever if you ask like give a couple of more years and if you ask this in interview questions i'm sure you have a lot of kids that say their first experience with like programming and getting into these kind of things was with minecraft redstone stuff i'm sure of it must be me too was mine okay well the, see then the generation is already there for sure must be like it's it's such a massive game redstone is so much fun uh you know of course, that must have motivated like masses of, of new people. So today our stream has been actually very productive. If you everybody's joining right now, <clears throat> done zero progress. We have added no wires at all in our over three hour stream. What we have done is we have replaced LEDs. What is Soding Channel stream about? Yeah, he's a he's a good programmer. Um, he's a, a professional PHP programmer, exactly. And if you watch his stream and you think, wait, this doesn't look like PHP. The reason for that is that Zoding is like really advanced with PHP. So like the, the PHP quality like that he is writing doesn't look like the shitty PHP, how you would see it, you know, like, like PHP websites are always terrible. The code quality is always terrible, but Zoding is really good at it. So like his PHP code looks actually fine and it's readable and makes sense and, it, and doesn't have issues and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, so, so so in case you were wondering. So this up here where the yellow LEDs are, in case you don't know, this is the clock module. This is supposed to be, uh, we are working on an 8-bit computer. So up here, this whole breadboard is the clock signal uh, where we can also change the speed of the clock and stuff like this. And so these LEDs are just status LEDs about the... I could have sworn this LED just flashed up or was I wrong? Maybe it was just, maybe my brain is starting to melt. So everybody who just joined, please close your eyes and lean back on your chair. Hands on the keyboard though, hands on the keyboard. I don't want to see your hands anywhere else. 
Just listen, just listen and enjoy, okay? Just listen and enjoy. Close your eyes. I should make like auto ban for like somebody mentioning Discord. <laughs> All of Twitch chat is literally, I see. Yeah, I see. There you go. We are already three and a half hours in. I don't intend to make this like a multi, uh, adding another hour or so. If we would start now continuing with the module, I'm sure it would take a bit longer. So I would say I pick here up slowly, sorting back the LEDs where they belong. Uh, and we just keep chatting for a little bit, uh, hang out for a little bit longer. And then uh, we soon uh, wind down the stream. I have like the sorting thing back there, like where these, so you have seen them maybe already on stream, like these, these boxes here that I have. I love them. They are amazing. They are quite expensive, uh, but I think this is like, this is like one of these products I do like buy once and it just does its job and it's great. Uh, I found these uh, by watching YouTube videos from, what's his name? Adam Savage, like from Mythbusters. Like he, this is a German company. He imports these to the uh, U.S. because the, the, he found them to be the best sorting boxes. Um, or maybe I should wait. German regulations. Let's put "ad" on there. Uh, the, um, I found um, like he said he, the, those are the best ones that he found, and then I bought them, and I got like I was also convinced these are amazing. These are great. I've always wanted like good sorting boxes. And so now, because I have so many more parts now for the stream also, and I'm actively using it, I've actually ordered, a, like I have like a, uh, it's, uh, it's a bit, uh, shit. Let me, let me show it to you. I've shown it on stream before, but I, I have like shit put on top of it. Wait, give me a second. So you have a workbench at the top. You have these, uh, these drawers. And here you can, I'm not sure if you can see it, like you have like this rack here and you can put them in here and you can pull them out and store them away. So, so you can put them back in here. And I love that system. That is so awesome. It's so well invested money. I love it. And so now, like I said, because I have even more parts now, uh, I ordered just a rack part, like just uh, for four additional um, boxes. Uh, I'm not quite sure where I put it, maybe just there in the background or something like this, but to sort all the parts and then we can get rid of all this mess that is on my table because then I finally like individual stuff to sort them. The dog is crying, give me a second, I need to let him out. One of the best purchases I've ma ever made, I love them. Uh, the system is called Sortimo. I need to ask them if they sponsor me because they are quite expensive and I want even more. I want I want all sorting stuff, just 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 that system. Yeah, I mean it's it's like for professional people, right? They they make like stuff for in into vans and stuff. It's like actually for you know professionals. It, that's why you don't find the, these products necessarily at your regular like hardware store or something like this. And so they have these boxes, and in my case, these are the I think the T boxes. So here are the, the boxes. You can also buy them empty and buy only the individual uh, things, like inlays that go in there. Uh, for example, you can buy like something like this, which is this box. And then it has like a lot of like individual just like uh, things. And they are like, you can take them out and stuff like this. And what, what is so good about them is that you can like tilt them over and parts will not like flip around because they have like these rails that protect us from happening and stuff like this. It's like, it's, it's a good system. And then you can buy these racks with it. So these are called workmo. So uh, I have like a, like I, I have basically a, a set of that, um, like this, uh, basically something like this. I build it myself from the parts though. But it's it's one of these things like, you know, like I've made a couple of, I made so many, per and I bet everybody can relate. You made so many purchases in your life where you spent money and the product was kind of crap or you actually didn't use it as much. So for example, you know, the oscilloscope I have here, right? It's great. I know it's a good product, but I actually, I don't get that much use out of it. I don't do that much electronics. So that's one of these pur purchases. Maybe it wasn't worth it so much, right? Those cameras that I've bought, to be honest, like, did I need really these expensive DSLR? Wouldn't I have been okay with just some 
some Logitech webcams, I would have been totally okay. Feel not quite sure if I feel comfortable with that price. But that baby is one of my most favorite purchases ever. I feel this thing like will last me forever. I'm so happy about it. And I just wanted to express this. So there you go, company Sortimo. Here you see a free ad. Now sponsor me, please. <laughs> just kidding. Before a big purchase, I take a week, reflect if I still want the thing and only then buy the thing. I know, I tried that too. Every time, so either I wasn't able to have the discipline and still just bought it, or I keep obsessing for a week. Like I literally watch every YouTube video that anybody has ever used that kind of product before. Like I watch it like, I spent hours just watching this product because in anticipation I want it so badly. Or like read blog posts and everything because I want it so badly. And then hour later, uh, then, then I buy it and then I barely use it. This happened for me, for example, with quadcopters. I really wanted to get into like, you know, like quadcopter racing, like the F FPV camera or something like this. Fl flying something is really cool. So I thought I built like that myself and I in imported like pretty expensive like parts to make like a proper one, like a good one, right? I bought the good parts for it, the good remote control and everything. I spent like a week researching. I was even like on Reddit. I asked around on Reddit. Somebody did a similar build and I chatted with that guy. And, and that guy was actually a physicist uh, doing like, uh, uh, like he was in his, during his PhD, he was doing like experiments in physics and he was interested in, um, uh, in here, uh, the what's it called the uh, outer space he was interested in that as his physics career and he even tried to become an astronaut at a later point like I, I follow him on Facebook so I follow this path and, and stuff like this so like you know a scientist and I, I was I had a Skype call with him while he was running experiments in his in his lab where he just explain to me certain like lessons learned from his quadcopter build. So I was really invested, right? Like I, I did all that. I was so hyped for it. It took me like a week or so. And then I finally decided, okay, let's buy these parts. I bought it. I flew it like two or three times. And then it sat on my, on, in, in my shelf for like two years. And then I finally decided to sell it at a massive loss. So this is the store where I order from. So this is uh, where I order like most of my electronics from. And so like, I have to say, you know, the internet is great, but having something like this to look for parts is so much nicer than scrolling through different categories on a website. This is, I, I, you're right, I need to put my ad sign on. So there we go, German regulations. I'm, I, I do my part. Thanks, Velo. Thanks for looking out for me. Okay, so like, see how thick this is. <coughs> here are the potentiometers. So see here. Um, okay, I guess I didn't order this one. Hey, why I didn't order this one? Okay, wait, what did I order then? Okay, maybe I just made a mistake. So exactly, okay. See these round ones, this one here does have PT on it. Like, right, this is also, I think I remember now when I ordered this, I thought these should fit. Okay, let's take one of these and let's take this double shaft thing. I don't see how this, how this would fit. The axle is PT-15. So, this is supposed to be a PT-15, right? So this is a PT-15. And this here is a, like a PT-15 laying down or something like this. Like, I, I don't understand. Like, this is like this game with like the, the triangles and, and cubes that a child has to put in into the correct thing. I think I'm dumb. Yeah, we can do some pen testing. Um, this is a very special pen, okay? This pen is imported from Japan, okay? Because 
pen testers really like this uh, blue red split of a pen. It's like kind of a style. So um, this pencil, this blue uh, blue red pencil, uh, only existed in Japan. We couldn't find it in Europe or in Germany. As well as these caps, like these are like like pen protection caps, so they don't break off when you put them away and stuff like this. We also couldn't find them in Germany. So I'm not sure. Times have maybe changed. Maybe you can get them now. But back in my days, uh, you you had to like trade them with Japanese pen testers. So uh, yeah, so it's a very light one. It's it's not easy to spin. Uh, you can't do much of it, but it's a classic. Uh, in in a in one of the most famous pen testing videos, uh, this red blue pencil was used. That's why it became so kind of famous and why so many people uh, wanted it at, the, at back then. You started training this kind of pen testing too. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Thanks for hanging out with me. Sellout Hacker will take over in a moment. And uh, because I have to take down my uh, my firewall, and so we are not protected anymore of him, and he will get through. But don't worry. Uh, while, while he is doing his thing, I will try to um, take the stream and uh, redirect the attack uh, to a different streamer, uh, aka hosting. So uh, if you have a recommendation uh, to host, uh, you can write this in chat right now. Uh, I will myself look if anybody I'm following is online or uh, what the deal is. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. Uh, I will be streaming tomorrow again. See you then. Bye bye.